Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Elle and this is Elle's Reptiles. This week we are doing sort of a bearded dragon care guide, but we're very specifically going to be focusing on the setup for a bearded dragon. This is not a, an extensive end all be all video. Definitely make sure if you are getting a bearded dragon to do your research and get information from multiple sources, not just me. A big reason that I'm making this setup video guide is because care is always changing. My personal opinion of care for bearded dragons has evolved as I've kept bearded dragons. So just keeping things updated. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko. So make sure to stay until the end of the video to find out all about this awesome company. Let's get started. First things first, you're gonna need an enclosure for this animal. You have so many different options for this. As a baby, depending on how old they are, if you're getting a tiny little newborn baby, they're gonna be okay in a 20 gallon very temporarily. They grow very, very fast. So, I mean, a month or two, you're gonna already need to upgrade. For an adult bearded dragon, it used to always be said that a 40 gallon breeder was a sufficient amount of room for them it is not bare minimum you are going to need at least a four foot tank you can start that baby off in a four foot tank and just buy one tank you don't have to get bigger and bigger tanks as they get older bearded dragons need room to move they need room to go eat and properly regulate their temperatures at very least a four foot by two foot tank is what your bearded dragon will need you can do this glass tanks you can do pvc enclosures you can make your own enclosure out of wood or old furniture or whatever you want to do you can do this however you want but whatever kind of tank that you use make sure that it closes appropriately we don't want an escaped lizard on our hands bearded dragons aren't generally one to make escape plans but you also want to have a good lid on that tank in order to prevent other things from getting in especially if you have like cats dogs small kids but four foot by two foot wide with some climbing room would be awesome <laughs> The biggest thing, especially if you are putting a baby in a really big tank, make sure that tank is full. Make sure that it's not just a big, open, empty space. Bearded dragons need enrichment in their tanks and reptiles in general tend to be more comfortable in tanks that are full. Make sure that that tank has various decorations. Make sure that there's hides. Make sure that there are tree branches. Just things for them to climb on. Textured backgrounds that they can climb on are awesome. Make sure that there's fake plants plants or real plants. Real plants would be even better. Herbs, succulents, things like that. Again, just make sure that there's things in that tank to fill it up and make little babies feel safe and to serve as enrichment for babies and adults. Enrichment is very, very important for reptiles. Okay, so apart from just having a bunch of stuff in the tank, what needs to be in the tank? So number one, substrate. You are going to need something in the bottom of that tank. You do not want your bearded dragon just on plain glass that's too slippery. There's nothing for them to grab onto. It makes it very difficult for them to walk. There are lots of different substrate options. So the number one, I guess, most used is always things like reptile carpet and sand mats. I do not recommend these things for a few different reasons. They are very difficult to properly clean. They're easy to clean, but they're very difficult to properly clean. When your bearded dragon uses the bathroom, it's going to be kind of a mess. And those particles and bacteria get all into those mats and get all into that carpet. Even if you are keeping that carpet super clean, the carpet does also tend to like grab onto their nails or nails can get stuck in it. It's just not recommended. Moving on up to things like non-adhesive shelf liners. These are a very inexpensive option. They are usually much easier to clean because they are made to put onto shelves for water and stuff to get on without causing mold and stuff like that. Make sure that you are using non-adhesive shelf liners, adhesive shelf liners that glue can release vapors when it gets too hot. You don't want that. Next up is tile. Tile was definitely a go-to. It was definitely my go-to for a very long time long time. It is going to be very easy to clean because I mean it's tile. You just wipe it down and nothing is going to absorb into it. You don't have to worry about your animal ingesting any sorts of substrates with tile. However, there was a thing about 
using only tile not too long ago. I have no concept of time. It might have been a while ago about how it may be bad for your bearded dragon's joints over time. So definitely keep that in mind. Maybe do further research into that and see what you can find. If you're going to use tile, make sure it is a textured tile, either ceramic or slate tile. Just like you don't want your bearded dragon sliding around on just straight glass all day, you don't want them sliding around on smooth, shiny, porcelain tile either. It being textured is also going to help file their nails down so you don't have to cut them. The next option is loose substrates. Bioactive mixes or just naturalistic mixes like organic topsoils mixed with children's play sand mixed with excavator clay or mixed with repti soil things like that just bioactive naturalistic mixes are absolutely fantastic there have been really good things said about the i think it's jurassic sand that is made specifically for bearded dragons and that is gathered from bearded dragons natural habitat the bio dude makes a fantastic loose substrate specifically for bearded dragons josh's frogs has bioactive substrate that is specifically for arid animals. Arcadia makes a bioactive substrate that is specifically for arid animals if you are in a place where you can get that. Lugardi, there's so many different options here. Make sure that whatever loose substrate you're using is safe though. Things that I do not recommend is of course going to be calcium sand, calcium sand, just just don't just don't do that one your animal's going to want to ingest it it's it's calcium ingesting constant calcium sand nonstop can mess up the chemical balance in your bearded dragon stomach making it harder for them to digest food leading to impaction the color dyes in those colorful sands have been known to dye bearded dragons and because it's something that i see often aspen i highly advise against aspen because number one when you put aspen in it's another one where they're just going to kind of sink down into it they're not really going to be able to dig in it it's not going to provide that digging enrichment that bearded dragons like and aspen tends to mold and get mildewy if it gets wet so if your animal uses the bathroom on it and you don't clean it up then you have a potential growth issue that's going to happen they can ingest those giant wood shavings just avoid things like that and stick to the recommended ones there are so many options Next up, hides. Your bearded dragon would be much happier if they had a hide. They may not hide all of the time. They may rarely ever use it. But when bearded dragons do things like brewmate during the winter, they're going to feel better if they have a place to hide. If your bearded dragon gets startled by anything, maybe they're startled by a loud noise or they're startled by a shadow that they don't like. Just them having somewhere that they can run and hide is going to make their life so much better. Food and water bowls. Your bearded dragon definitely needs some sort of food bowl. Bearded dragons eat a lot. They, any kind of little shallow dish for a salad is fantastic. You can even use dog and cat bowls for this. You can use whatever you want, really. If you're gonna feed things like crickets and doobie roaches, stuff like that, what I generally do for those situations is use the big porcelain dog dishes. And then I just kind of put her up usually on like a stump or something something so she can just kind of grab them without them escaping. You can take them out of the tank, put them in a sterilite bin and fill it with um, doobie roaches, crickets, those sorts of things, however you want to do it. And as far as a water dish, this one is always highly debated. Bearded dragons don't necessarily need a water dish. They get the vast majority of their water from the foods that they eat, especially those salads. That's why they're so important. That's why it's so important to gut load your bugs and give your bugs water. But if you do want to provide them with fresh water, you can do it a couple different ways. You can drop water on their noses and they'll drink it that way. If you have like big plants, fake or real plants in that tank. You can kind of spray those with water. You don't spray the whole tank down, but you can spray those little plants with water and sometimes they will find that. Or you can provide a water dish if your bearded dragon will drink out of a water dish. Not all bearded dragons will. Bearded dragons can't really see standing water, but some tend to find it and drink it. Biggest thing here is have a hygrometer in that tank. You should have hygrometer thermometers in that tank anyway to measure ambient temperatures and the humidity. But if you have a water dish in that tank and it is not spiking your humidity, it's perfectly fine to have a water dish in that tank. If you are already struggling with very high humidity levels, maybe don't put a water dish in there. Like some people live in super dry environments and water dishes may benefit them if the humidity is falling too low. Just 
kind of do what feels best and what works for your bearded dragon in that regard. Next up, lights. Heating and lighting is one of the most important things that we're gonna talk about when we talk about bearded dragon tanks. Bearded dragons need heating and lighting. I have an entire video here where I go in depth about different heating and lighting options for bearded dragons, or here, I don't, I never know. The main thing here is you need linear UVB lighting and you need a heat source for your bearded dragon. You need to make sure that that heat source is getting their basking spot the appropriate temperature. Using a temperature gun, very important. Not the thermometer on the wall, a temperature measuring gun, a spot measurer. Make sure that their basking spot is the correct temperature. As for the wattage of the heat bulb, I don't know because it depends on so many different things. It depends on what season it is, how hot your house is, how far away from your basking spot the heat bulb is, what brand it is. It depends on so many different things. My biggest advice here is to get a bigger heat bulb, so maybe 100, 150 watt, and then get a dome with a dimmable switch so that you can adjust it to get that basking temperature perfect. And you want to make sure that they have the appropriate levels of UVB lighting. Bearded dragons need high levels of UVB lighting in order to properly digest their food. That means that one little spotlight of UVB is not going to be sufficient. They need linear UVB. And you want to aim for about two thirds to 100% of that tank being covered with UVB. That UVB light needs to be a high quality UVB light. So you don't want to get some off brand off of Wish for your animal's UVB lighting. The Best recommended brands are going to be Reptisun, Reptisun 10.0 specifically. Generally, you're gonna use the high output version of that if it's going on top of the mesh. If there is no mesh screen, there's nothing on top. It just, your light is maybe mounted inside of your tank. You might not need the high output. There are UVB charts that you can look at to see exactly what it is that you need. Or the Arcadia, there's a couple different ones here. There is the 12%. There's also a 14% bearded dragon one. Again, that all depends on how you have it mounted. If you mount it on top of the mesh screen in your tank, you're going to need a higher level of UVB output because that mesh screen actually filters some of that UVB out. The materials and looking at those charts and seeing the distance from your basking spot to your UVB light and all that stuff. Make sure that it is set up appropriately. Very, very important, UVB lighting cannot go through glass. So if you have a glass top and your UVB is sitting on top, it is not doing anything. And just a couple of other things for that you'll need, which we've already kind of mentioned. You're gonna need thermometer hygrometers to go into that tank. You need temperature guns to measure the temperature and the, on the basking spot, cold sides, all that stuff. Sometimes people need things on top of their tanks to keep cats out or to locks on the tank to keep kids out. And while it's not completely necessary and it is pretty expensive, you may also find a solar meter to be helpful. This just measures the UV output of your UVB lighting to kind of let you know when and if it's time to replace it. But that is about it. That is all that I have for this week's video. Hopefully it was informative. If you are getting a bearded dragon and you are just trying to get a basic understanding of how their tanks need to be set up, hopefully this video was helpful. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is a really cool company that makes conversion kits for your animals in order to have super inexpensive front opening tanks. You can put these conversion kits on any standard glass tank. That's it. You use silicone, seal it in, and you have a super nice front opening tank for your animal that you can now just reach into instead of reaching down through mesh screens that you always have to remove. You always have to lock them up. They get really irritating. This is just an all-in-one solution, and they're really cool. If you do happen to order one from iHeartGeckos.com, make sure to leave Else Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box. That way they know that you guys are coming from here. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for continuing to sponsor these videos. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out is here, and this week's subscribe shout out is here. Thank you so much for liking and following and subscribing and commenting and sharing and all that jazz. You are the bee's knees. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. Whatever. Okay. Seems to be. Um, really.
Um, and as far, but for the, actually that's unimportant. That's not really going into the tank. Well, I guess it is. I don't know.